Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. Important to us to show that the family, that there are people that care other than family, that we may not know them, but we do care and we want to pay our respects to them. The community of Grand Forks and the Red River Valley region is coming together today to honor fallen police officer Cody Holty. People are just starting to show up as the funeral gets underway in about an hour. And Valley News team's Joshua Peguero joins us live from in front of the Ralph Ingolstead Arena where the events are just being held. Joshua. Jordan, we've had live coverage all morning. I got here at about 9.30, and the crowd started showing up about 10.30. I'm move out the way now so my photographer can show you the entrance of the Ralph Engelstead Arena. As you can see there, parked in front of the arena is the car of Cody Holty, um, the fallen Grand Forks police officer that we're here to honor the life of. Uh, in front of his vehicle is their hearse. And now, people are supposed to get inside uh, and, and be quiet uh, by about 12.30. After that, the uh, funeral is supposed to start at 1.00. And then um, after that's done around three, uh, Precision is then going to commence and go to Halstead. Uh, we're going to have continued live coverage, uh, not only on TV at Valley News Live, but also online. Uh, and we're going to stream this funeral. Again, this is for Cody Holty, and the funeral is supposed to start at one, and then it's going to lead all to Halstead. I'm going to send it right back to you live in the studio. Uh, reporting in Grand Forks, Joshua Piguero. Valley News Live. And a visitation was held for him from about 10 to noon where people have been uh, showing their respects all day. And again, yes, we will have that live on KVLY Channel 11, the Valley News Live Facebook page, the VNL News app, and on the Facebook page for Valley News Live as well. Let's get a check now of that Tuesday forecast, taking that live look outside. It's awful sunny right now. Earlier in the day, well, it looked like it was going to storm, and for some folks, it wasn't very pretty out there. But for what we can expect, let's head on over to First Alert Storm Team meteorologist Lisa Green. Yeah, some of us have had a bumpy morning in the Southern Valley, especially where we've had storms move through, bringing with it some large hail in some instances and some really cool looking clouds that pass through the Fargo-Moorhead area. You can see these swirls and waves going on. Well, it's a specific type of cloud. It's called say it with me, undulatus aspiratus. It basically just means that you've got that wave motion going on and there's a lot of turbulence uh, happening at that cloud layer. And we got lots of great photos of this. You can head to our gallery and check those out. Chris sent that one in. Here's a look at the latest. We're still seeing some stronger storms in the valley. You see the crawl at the bottom of the screen indicating a stronger storm, not severe, but a stronger storm going on in Grant County, but surrounding areas also dealing with that. And then some rain up to the north as well. Well, zooming in on that area in the Elbow Lake region in Grant County, we could be seeing some larger hail, maybe some nickel size hail, especially in the southern part of the county at this point in time. And this is moving to the east, southeast and larger area of rain uh, over into the Wadena area. Hail size detection where you see the purple spots there on the map. That's where the radar is indicating that we might be dealing with some hail in Grant County. Other places seeing some rain up north with some big breaks in between. So we're going to talk more about our chances for rain and thunderstorms storms as we advance through the rest of the afternoon. Take a look at that forecast for today and beyond in just a few minutes. And we all learned a new word today, so thank you for that, Lisa. <laughs> We have new information this afternoon on the COVID-19 pandemic within the region. In Minnesota, 310 new cases have been confirmed, along with 22 more deaths linked to the illness. In total, the death toll for the, the death toll rather for the state now sits at 1,072, with 866 in long-term care facilities. There are now 4,055 active COVID-19 cases in Minnesota. 20,381 people no longer require isolation. North Dakota saw four more deaths linked to the illness. All victims were from Cass County with underlying health conditions. They were ranging in age from their 60s to their 90s. 22 new cases were reported as well, bringing the active total to 454. 2,127 people are now listed as recovered. A garage is destroyed after a fire in Grand Forks earlier today. Crews say it happened around 3 in the morning in the 1500 block of 11th Avenue South. When firefighters arrived, the garage was fully engulfed in flames. No one was inside the detached garage and no vehicles were inside either. The cause is still under investigation. Police are looking for the person who stole a car and crashed it in North Fargo. The North Dakota Highway Patrol says whoever it was hit a cable median barrier on I-29 just near 19th Avenue North 
just before about 11 o'clock this morning. That person then took off on foot from the crash. Troopers say it doesn't appear the driver was hurt, but police couldn't find them when they searched the area. The owner of the vehicle had reported it stolen earlier in the night in Fargo. Minnesota's Attorney General says prosecutors are working as fast as they can to determine whether more charges will be filed against officers involved in the death of George Floyd. Attorney General Keith Ellison was appointed the lead prosecutor in the case on Sunday. Derek Chauvin, the police officer who pressed his knee into the back of Floyd's neck, has been charged with third-degree murder and second-degree manslaughter. Members of Floyd's family are calling for more serious charges, as well as charges against the three other officers who were there. Ellison did not give a timeline for any new charges. All four officers have since been fired. It's been more than a week since George Floyd died after being arrested by police in Minneapolis. And since his death, there have been mass protests around the country, with some turning into looting. President Donald Trump says he is ready to use the military to crack down on those protests. Michael George has the latest from Minneapolis. As President Trump spoke from the White House Rose Garden last night, the nearby violence between police and protesters could be heard. We must never give in to anger or hatred. Peaceful protesters in Lafayette Park had been fired on with tear gas. A cameraman from an Australian TV station was hit by police. Oh, whoa. President Trump said he will use the military if the nationwide protests can't be controlled. To stop the rioting and looting, to end the destruction and arson, and to protect the rights of law-abiding Americans. It was a similar message he relayed to the nation's governors on a call earlier in the day. If he can't say something that is going to help us across the nation to bring the temperature down, then he shouldn't say anything at all. After the protesters were cleared out, President Trump walked to a church damaged in Sunday night's protest and posed for a photo while holding the Bible. We have a great country. For days now, protesters have demanded justice for the death of George Floyd. But at times, violence has overshadowed that message. Yesterday, things were calm here in Minneapolis, where Floyd's brother pleaded for things to stay that way. Let's switch it up. Yeah. Amen. Do this peacefully. Please. At a Delaware church, former Vice President Joe Biden said he'll form a police oversight board if elected president. There's a lot of different things that can change. Yeah. Biden is expected to give a speech today in Philadelphia on the protests. <laughs> George Floyd will be buried in exactly one week in his hometown of Houston, Texas. Boxing great Floyd Mayweather has reportedly offered to cover the funeral expenses. The Bismarck Police Department says a peaceful protest is planned in that city at 4 o'clock this afternoon. It will be along the 2300 block of East Main Avenue. Police say they support the First Amendment right to gather, but they will not tolerate property damage or violence. Coming up here at noon, a major clinic is developing a new way for COVID-19 patients to see a doctor. Find out how it works and when we could see it across the country. But next, Lisa Green is in with everything we need to know for that Tuesday forecast.